In South Africa, many people are affected and infected with HIV AIDS. Here in Sidesea Kailicha, some wonderful groups and organizations have been set up to help support the community and help fight the spread of HIV. Here at the Ugakanya Home Base Center, a group of proactive people have joined together to form a support group. Here they talk about their problems and successes of living with HIV in the community. Let's see what they're up to. My name is Mavis Mashaiwa. Um, I'm staying in TR section, TR 67, side B. Uh, I'm 48 years old. I've got two boys. The big one is 19, the small one is 12. Uh, diagnosed 2003 on September with HIV positive. And then now I'm on treatment and I'm living with that HIV. I like that. The problem in, the, in our areas, in our township, is the stigma. When you stand there outside, you disclose. Like me, I disclose on the St. Catherine Church in Cape Town. It was very full up. So I stand there because I like to be on top of the pulpit. And then I can talk all my nonsense. And then, now the stigma here, we deal with a lot of stigma in churches. We go to several churches to tell our people in churches how to treat the people who live in HIV and AIDS. We do door to door campaigns. Yes, we we teach the people how to deal with the people living with HIV and AIDS. Because HIV and AIDS is the same like you diagnose the diabetics or Sugar. high blood, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we try to to teach the people in our communities. But still, there are people that are still dying on the bed because of their stigmatization and discrimination. But we try to fight that because when we do those campaigns and those workshops, we try to get the people out of the bed and we say it's not the end of the road. Mm -hmm. So if you diagnose HIV and AIDS, you're supposed to be proud of yourself and you stand up and you won't die with HIV and AIDS, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. You dare with another thing. So if you tell yourself, I'm not dying now, mm -hmm. I can go and help the other people outside there about HIV and AIDS. And the problem is now, the people living with HIV and AIDS and the TB, they were dropping down the city for count because of the government disability yes. grant. Yes. Because when you are above 200, mm -hmm. You can't get a disability grant. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be below 200, oh, and then your city for grant is below 200, and then you can get the, the disability grant. Even that below 200, 200. You, you can't get while you're working like me. Yes. You're getting yeah, why you're yes. sick on a bed, like you stage four, and you can't do for yourself. The yeah. people, they were helping you. Everything is go out. Mm. You drink water, you pass down there. Mm. You eat food, you pass down there, and mm. then you can get the disability grant. Mm. So government doesn't do nothing about that. Uh -uh. So we, in support groups, we just in a critical situation. It's painful to drop down your city for account yeah, because you want to qualify from the government disability grant. And that is why you guys appealing from the government that please at least don't let us die in order to qualify from the disability grant because the virus is still running through our veins you understand we are appealing to the government and then we thank what the government is doing now but it's not enough the purpose is to boost the immune yes. system you know the purpose is not just to get that money no, and to it, it, help it, you in this table yes and and also that money is also helping us because we also have children and then we've got also children that are infected and affected with these barriers. The children here at Kwakanwe Kresh have a safe place to come where they can play and learn new skills. The thin resources are stretched to go very far. Zoli's soup kitchen is another wonderful example of community resourcefulness. Uh, this is Monde Matalis um, who stays around here, uh, this is in Sightsea. But at the present moment, we're here uh, at Zillow's Soup Kitchen, which provides uh, soup for the orphans, uh, especially those who are uh, affected by HIV. 
and she's, she's very creative because she's also having a support group uh, of the people that were affected by HIV and she provides this soup for for the kids and and even for the unemployment people around this area. So she's uh, doing well and I think we need to focus on what she's doing and as we understand that uh, recently she's been uh, affected by the fire so she's, she's trying to stand up again and doing what she's doing uh, perfectly on the right way and she hasn't built her house at the moment but she's uh, on the track of building a house uh, doing this uh, feeding the, uh, the kids around in this community here, here in Kanya Charles we started food gardens yes. we've got the other one in Masil if you drive there in uh, Masil High School mm -hmm. we've got the food garden there mm -hmm. those people working there is those people who are sitting that's here in HIV. Kenya that's HIV. HIV because we don't have we don't have that on our homes so we do that because we want to benefit and then we need a lot of nutrition because we need to we don't have money to buy food to fill our cells of our body to boost our immune system because we don't want our immune system to go down we need to boost ourselves so in terms of the infrastructure some of the the things came with the, 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 the service provider who's offering the energy and there are certain things here which were provided by the Department of Agriculture, the, the provincial. So the seedlings, the seedlings, we, we, we make sure that we sell and after generating money, then we use them for the next production cycle. Yeah, it's like a farm, but they're still making sure that the customer get what you want and they also have something to get home to. Yeah. What we are using is the municipality water. Then we have, we've agreed with the school committee so, so that we can use uh, uh, the municipality water in the meantime. Yeah, it's one way of farming, organic farming, a holistic way of farming. Because you you make you always make sure that there is um, a minimum disturbance of the soil. Because we, we we are doing organic farming, we are not using chemicals. So most of the things which we use, uh, they are they, they are of a, a natural source. So meaning we always have to maintain what we have other thing which we do is also to to mulch it to mulch the soil making sure that we don't lose a um, lot of moisture through evaporation uh, making sure that the mulch which we use they're also uh, suppressing the weeds so meaning uh, sometimes the mulch we have it also tends the, the, the weeds to, to get rotten and decompose and become part of the soil. What's the community's response to the project? Yeah, I can say it's excellent actually, because in most cases you'll find them coming in, they're also coming in to buy our stuff in here. So I can say it's excellent. If maybe they were having enough land, I mean, they, they, they were going to maybe even get more people to join them. So I think it's excellent because it's also dealing with the poverty elevation issue. The, um, also, the, the, the issue of socioeconomic value. Yeah, the surrounding area. Yeah.